Hello and welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where the eagle-eyed amongst you will note that I am on my laptop today and I hope the sound quality is okay. I've brought my microphone with me, I'm on, I'm on holiday at the moment, and um, but I'm absolutely determined to try and keep up the, um, the two videos a day record that Mark and I have managed to preserve for the three years since the start of the first Covid lockdown. Um, and actually, frankly, I, I haven't done a video the last couple of days because I pre-recorded videos, which I've hardly ever done for the channel before. And I've actually found I've really missed it. <laughs> I miss you guys. Um, even though it's a bit of a one-way conversation, I've been doing it for so long and I, I really value what I call the interaction, but I don't know if that's the right word. But anyway, I wanted to do a puzzle and um, Mark tells me that I need to do this one because apparently we've been receiving even more requests than usual to have a look at this puzzle which is the latest puzzle by Fistbefell. It's called Sagittar which I think is some sort of reference to Sagittarius. Possibly Sagittar is the name of a constellation. I don't actually know um, but I guess it could be if especially if these circles here somehow approximate to the positions of stars within that constellation. What I do know about this puzzle it is, it, is it's meant to be absolutely brutally hard. It's got five stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany and I had a look at the comments uh, from those people who have solved it and basically there, there are a lot of people saying they found it monstrous several people saying that they bifurcated to a solution which puts me at a big disadvantage because those of you who know me will know that I will not bifurcate I just won't do it um, so if I can't solve it what I'll have to do is uh, ask Mark to have a go uh, and if Mark can't solve it either I don't know what we'll do then um, I, I suspect some sort of solve will appear of the puzzle in due course um, but if we can't do it in a live solve we'll have to somehow uh, I don't know do it in a, a w work it out privately and then post a, a guide as to how to solve it after that um, now, what can I tell you? What do I need to tell you about? Well, there's loads of loads of excuses I need to give first. I'm on holiday, so I've got holiday brain. That does not bode well. I'm looking out over a graveyard. I don't go on holidays to graveyards, but um, the holiday house that we've hired does seem to overlook a graveyard. Um, so, yeah, I, I might be affected by spirits or something. Um, also, uh, <laughs> there is a public walkway going past outside. There are dogs everywhere and sometimes the dogs get very cross with each other and their owners and they go mental. Um, all of these things could affect uh, my ability uh, to produce a reasonable video here. So please, uh, if, it, if it does go wrong, um, just bear, bear with me. Um, uh, yeah, and I am sorry. Um, other than that, what else do I need to say? Thank you so much. We are, we are closing in on 500,000 subscribers. It is absolutely extraordinary to us. We're trying to say thank you. We've got two things going on at the moment. The first is a coupon code where you can get our book, Cracking the Cryptic Greatest Hits, at a discounted price. Um, we do have a few copies left still. Not, not that many, though. So if you're interested in it, please, please get it now and please use the, the coupon code that is in the video description under the video. And of course, we have this free app that we're going to be releasing when we hit 500,000 subscribers. It's it's going to be something fairly amazing, actually. Uh, it's going to have puzzles in it from loads and loads of the setters that you've come to know and love if you've been following the channel. People like Fistimafel um, have contributed puzzles to it. It really should be something else. And yeah, it's coming hopefully very soon. I think we're on about 497,000. So if you are uh, not a subscriber and you want a free app and you enjoy the content, you know what to do. Um, other than that, I don't think I've got anything else to tell you. It's a bit of a long-winded uh, ramble at the start of this where I've got all my excuses in early um, before I attempt what I imagine is going to be a brutal video. But now I'm going to try and do it for you. So what are the rules? We've got um, the rules are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. Um, orthogonally adjacent cells, i.e. those that share an edge, must not add up to 5 or 10. Right, let's just go through these rules in order. So digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow circle. That is a common rule. Arrow Sudoku, so that means if we have 1, 2 and 3 on this arrow, 
the, the, the circled cell would be a 6 because 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals, you've guessed it, 6. Now, this next rule is not common though. Orthogonally adjacent cells, so that means dominoes in the grid, uh, those that share an edge, obviously that a domino, uh, these two, this cell shares an edge with this cell, um, must not add up to 5 or 10. So you can't have things like 4, 1, 2, 3, 2, 8, 1, 9, oh, I tried to type 1, 9 and failed, not a good sign. Um, all of this would be illegal anywhere in the puzzle. That is a quite ridiculous negative constraint. Um, and that is all the rules. Now, if you've been following the channel, you know my views about Pistemafel. He is an absolute genius um, and always makes me feel stupid. So stay with the video. If you want to see me look stupid, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. My microphone is perched on a board game called Scategories and a feline frenzy 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle, neither of which look particularly stable. So it could all go wrong for many reasons this. Um, but let's see what we can say straight away. I can see that that is a three cell arrow when we did the example. So this circle's got to be at least equal to six because one plus two plus three is already six. So that circle is a six. And it occurs to me that, well, as I was doing the example there, I was thinking about the negative constraint. If I make this digit a six, it's surrounded by one, two, and three on the arrow. So the four, which is sort of the illegal digit that we cannot put next to a six, has to hide in a corner of box four. If this is a six, obviously it could be a seven, and then you'd have one, two, four on the arrow, and the three would have to hide in a corner. Yeah, okay. So I think the negative constraint is in some way important. Wow. In some way important. If you have eight here, then normally eight can be one, two, five, or one, three, four. But in this puzzle, um, if we do have eight here, you can't put two anywhere on the arrow because it will create a domino that sums to 10. So that means if you have an eight here, you have to have you have to have a 1, 3, 4 arrow and the 2 has to hide in the corner. Uh, yeah, this is fascinating already actually. If you have 9, you can't put 1 on the arrow because of course 9 and 1 sum to 10. So you've got to hide the 1 away, not just hide your love away, you've got to hide the 1 away and you've got to put 2, 3, 4 on the 9 arrow. So that instantly smacks of design, doesn't it? That is in the sense that any of the options for this arrow have exactly one option to make the total work because you cannot put one of the digits 1, 2, 3 and 4 next to the digit 6, 7, 8 or 9. which is interesting. It does, actually it is interesting because it does mean those cells have to be from one, two, three, and four, which ordinarily wouldn't be the case. Because ordinarily you could put five or six on a three cell arrow. So uh, for instance, if, if, if this was a nine, you could have one, two, and six, but here you can't because the one can't go with the nine. With an eight, you could have a five on the arrow because you could have one, two, five, but here you can't because you can't have a two with an eight. So, so that is interesting. And that, ah, okay, so we've got this other pyramid arrow here, which is the same shape, except this one doesn't look quite as powerful because this circle is shielded from Yeah, okay, it's still a bit powerful, but it's not as powerful. This cell still has to be six, seven, eight, or nine, because again, 
we've got to make these th the three digits on the arrow different, so one, two, three would be the minimum. And again, if this is six, we've got to, well, here, if this was six, you had to hide the four in the corner. Here, if this is six, you don't have to. The six can go in this u-pentomino, sorry, the four can go in the u-pentomino because it's always shielded from the six because the arrow does the shielding. So it's slightly less, it's slightly less powerful for the sort of the complement digit, the digit that it would accompany the digit in the circle to sum to 10. That, that has an extra, yeah, one extra cell it can be in, in this box. Ah, do we still have the thing? Yes, we've still got one, two, three, four on the arrow. That that principle is the same. You've got to have only one, two, three, and four on the arrow. Because again, if you if it's an eight and you want to put one, two, five on it, you can't. That still doesn't work. And neither does it work with nine and one. Because you're always creating dot. Yeah, this is totally clever, isn't it? From Fistemafel. This particular pattern of sort of a pyramid-shaped arrow creates three dominoes in each case and rules rules a particular digit out of each out of each pyramid depending on what you put in the circle so I'm wondering now I'm wondering if this is a coloring puzzle about low digits and high digits because these pyramids are very much aligning do you have to have yes you ah right okay got something here you've got to have a low digit on this two cell arrow because if you don't what's this total if there was no one two three or four on this domino it would be a minimum of a five plus a six and would add to a two digit number. So this little domino here must have a one, two, three or four in one of its cells, but it can't have two cells taken from one, two, three and four, because if it did, there would be five digits in this row selected from four different digits, one, two, three and four, and that would break the rules of Sudoku. So that doesn't work. So actually, we now, know that this digit here is at least a five. Yeah, so we probably have to keep track of the low digits here. These are all low digits, which I think I'm meant to make blue, if I remember rightly. Mark likes me to make low digits cold, which he associates with blue, and high digits orange, because they're sunny digits. So, because we know that one of these is blue, and that will be the fourth blue in row five, the rest of the row has to be orange, i.e. five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Now, do you have to have a blue in that domino? Yes, yes, you do. You do. Because, again, if, if there's no blue in this domino, then it's got to be selected from things like fives and sixes, and that's going to add up to 11 at least. So there's a blue in there, which means that's orange. Um, there's got to be a, yeah, oh, ah, right, okay, all right, each of these dominoes is the same, it has the same principle, this looks very suspicious, and my laptop fan has turned on with the suspiciousness of this, which almost certainly means that all you can hear now is a laptop fan and not my voice, probably a good thing, um, but yeah, look, each of these two cell arrows has to have a blue digit on it, and that seems to be doing work. It's completed the blue digit quota for box six. It completes the blue digit quota for row five and it completes the blue digit quota for row four. So all of these cells have to be orange. No. Okay, so now the digit that, that goes with this digit to add up to 10 can't go in these two corners of this box now. So it goes in one of those two squares. 
because it can't go here obviously because if if this was a six you can't put the four underneath it that's not going to work that's going to be a domino if it's a seven you can't put the three underneath it so the low digit that is the complement of this square now hides in one of those two cells and that cell is orange Uh, that cell is orange because it is the sum of a blue digit and an orange digit. In fact, that digit is at least a six, isn't it? Because one of these cells is blue, a one, two, three or four. One of them is orange, a five, six, seven, eight or nine. Not a nine, obviously, because then this will be a two digit number. So this adds up to at least six. So that's at least a six. And this is therefore orange. Now, they are two blues. This is so beautiful. It's so, not just sort of chromatically, but it's so clever. Right, that's two blue cells. Because there's only one blue there. There's only one blue there. There are four blues in box five altogether. So those two have got to be blue. And therefore they are one, two, three, and four. Now those, that's interesting. Because that domino can't add up to five because that will be illegal so this domino is not one four or two three which all right how do we use that then so if that cannot be a five domino how is that supposed to do something in the puzzle um, mm. also this domino here has to not be an illegal domino so whatever this is mm. this puzzle is about how low digits and high digits combine I think and possibly how low digits and low digits combine. Actually, I'm not sure I know what it's about, but it's it's clearly there's clearly some clevernesses going on. And unfortunately, Holiday Brain is not actually telling me. I feel like I should know something now as a result of this domino. Can't be one, four, or two, three. There's still a lot of things it could be. It could be one two, it could be one three, it could be two four. Um it could be three four. What about that digit? Do I know is that got to be a six as well? Yes. Okay, yeah, this digit is the same as this digit. This digit is the sum of an orange digit and a blue digit. An orange digit is at least five, a blue digit is at least one, so that's got to be at least a six. Ah, right, so now I'm wondering something else, which is whether we've got some sort of weird syzygy of these cells. Are those cells all different digits? Are these cells all different digits? Can I prove that? I always think this. Whenever I get six, sevens, eights and nines in complicated puzzles, I always think that the setter has probably found a way to make them different digits. Um, ah, well. Actually, there is definitely something here because that digit, just look at this digit very specifically. That digit cannot be the same as that digit for a rather lovely reason. Because if these two digits were the same, let's make them six. Well, they, these would be one, two, three triples. And that would mean by Sudoku, this needed to be a one, two, three, triple, because we'd have to put one, two, and three somewhere in row six. It would have to be in that cell, and that cell cannot be one, two, or three. Ah, and this is deliberate, 
this is deliberate epistemophel because remember when we worked out what what digits were associated with each of the high numbers sevens six sevens eights and nines there was only one way of doing each combination so that means if you ever mimic these digits you've always got exactly the same digits if we try nine here we've got to have two three four on both triples and two three four can't go into row six only two of them could go into row six so that means that this digit is not the same as this digit this digit is not the same as this digit and this digit if it was the same as this digit by sudoku it would go there which we've just proved is impossible so that digit is not I don't know how we're going to show this, but that digit is definitely different from these three digits. Um, it needs its own colour. Now, this is where this could get really tricky because... I'm now wondering whether we're meant to abandon our blues and oranges because how much more am I going to get from my blues and oranges? And that's going to depend on how we're going to go. Oh, hang on. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I've messed this up, haven't I? This digit is going to be somehow restricted in this box. Oh, bobbins. Right, let's check this out. So, that digit, I've just noticed, can't go on its own arrow. Ah, oh, hang on. Uh, I'm not quite sure about this actually, but that this right. Let's go through this. This digit, whatever it is, and actually I've just realised it's at least a six <laughs> because it's exactly the same sort of from a property perspective as these two digits. This domino is a low digit and a and a orange digit. Therefore, it's a five and a one at least. So that is at least a six. Now that digit has to find a home in this box. Now it can't go on its own arrow because if this digit was purple, for example, the only way this mathematically works is if that digit's zero and that's nonsense. So we can't do that. So these are not purple. These are not purple. Six is not, well, one, twos, threes and fours are blue digits. They're not, they're not as high as an orange digit, which this most certainly is. So this digit either goes there or there. Now the unfortunate thing about that is that that is an orange digit. So we can't assume that this maps onto this digit. Although I bet you it does. If this digit goes here, that digit goes up there by Sudoku. If it goes here, it goes over here by Sudoku. Okay, um, so one of the, uh, see this is where it's going to get really difficult. I've, I'm going to have to overlay orange digits with purple if I keep this as purple. I think I'm going to get rid of orange. Is that dangerous? It might be. We might have to reinstate orange. I'm just going to try this for a moment though because I want to make it clear that one of these two squares has to be purple. And I think having a purple overlaying orange with the grey flash, which is what I like to do when I don't know where a digit goes exactly, I grey flash it with colouring, is would be overkill. So, mm, oh yeah, and that was the other thing I was thinking about, wasn't it, before I thought about this. The reason I was thinking about all this was I was trying to prove these are all different digits and I got distracted. So this one, right, this one has its own colour. Let's just make that green. Because that digit we worked out was not the same as those three digits. So this digit... Oh, no, that's no good. OK, well, I was thinking that digit clearly is not the same as green by Sudoku. It's clearly not the same as this digit by Sudoku. It's in the same box. But could it be that digit? And it might be able to, because if this digit and this digit were the same, that would just plonk it down there somewhere. Well, there might be some negative constraint in implications, but only if we know how these low digits relate to this high digit. <laughs> it's getting very complicated. Um, hmm, what about... 
Yes, got it. Right, what about that one? Is that its own colour? I.e. is it different from this one, this one and this one? And I think the answer is yes. Now let's just think about that. If this digit was green, then this digit would be green. But we know these are different because the contents of these arrows have to be different. So this is not, it's not green. If it's the same as this digit, this digit, these three would all be the same again by Sudoku and that we know does not work. And it's clearly different from that digit. So that digit is its own color. I'm so suspicious about this. I'm sure there's gonna be a way that, that we can prove these are all different. Now, what about if this, if this one no this is the one we can't do it could be the same as this if that one that one can't be the same as that it can't be the same as this but it could be the same as this how do we prove these are different <laughs> um and sorry, I mean, this is probably totally ludicrous and not what Fistimavell intended as a way to solve this, but it, I just feel when you get this sort of six, seven, eight, nine stuff going on, that this is probably where this puzzle is going. Oh, we had 26 minutes, good grief. No digits, of course. They would be somewhat of a luxury inside half an hour on a Fistimavell. Um, so, what do we do with this? We could say that, well, what would the effect be if these were different? Maybe that's what we're meant to think about. If these are different. Oh, hang on, if these were, no, I'm going back to thinking if they're the same. If they're the same and they were six, I see that would have to be five one. That would be the only way that could work. It couldn't be two four, or there'd be too many ones, twos, threes, and fours in row four. But this wouldn't need to be. I mean it could be eight, for example, if it's eights like that. This one has to not be one, two, five. So that would be one, three, four. And that's not really putting any pressure on this. We know there's a low digit on this, and we know there's an old orange digit. Um Bother. I feel oh one of these is ah oh, no I was just noticing one of those had to be orange I don't know which one let's just flash that up one of these is orange and I was suddenly thinking that might affect because because there's going to be a low digit associated with the orange digit that can't be next to it if this is a seven you can't put three next to it so depending on where orange is here it has an implication for these two digits or these two digits. But I don't actually, th I think th the complement to this digit can still go around. Oh, hang on, no, it has to go around, doesn't it? Oh, this is, get this is weird, this is weird, yeah, okay. It has to go around. The complement to this, I think, has to, has to not be here. I'm gonna say that. But yeah, that's clearly true because one of these is orange. But I'm gonna go further than that and say it has to be one of those two. And that's because green has a naughty digit that cannot be next to it. And we know that digit is in one of those two squares. Now, orange being different from green, therefore, its naughty digit must be one of these three digits. And we know it's not this one, so it's now one of those two digits is the naughty digit that cannot go next to this. So if this was orange, that would be the naughty orange digit that goes with orange to add up to 10. And the naughty green digit then is not those two digits. So, does the naughty, so, oh, hang on, yeah. So the naughty green digit, which is in one of these two cells, is one of the digits surrounding 
this digit. Oh, hang on. I'm going to get. I'm, I'm changing my mind all the time about how this is. I meant to color this. I'm going to get rid of the color here. I'm going to make that purple, and I'm going to get rid of this color. And I'm just going to remember this digit has to go in one of those two cells because this digit is definitely not the same as green, and it's definitely not the same as orange. The interesting one is this digit and whether this can be purple or not. But this is definitely different from these two. So the naughty purple is down here. Oh, I can't quite get my head around this at all. So So two of Yes, okay. Okay. So each of these combinations, the combination that sums to green is going to pick up is going to pick up two digits that are in common with the three digits that add up to purple. That must be true because there's no other way of selecting three digits from four things such that those three things aren't totally identical. They have to have two things in common, don't they? Let's just, let's just prove that to ourselves. If we had six here and eight here, this is going to be one, three, four. That's going to be one, two, three. And the one and the three are going to be in common. If this is nine, this is two, three, four. So the two and the three are in common. If this is seven, the one and the two are in common. Yeah, so if this is seven and this is eight, we're going to have ones and, no, we're going to have ones and, th no, hang on. What are we going to have in common? Because this, this, oh, ones and fours are in common. Because this will be one, three, four, that will be one, two, four. If we have seven and nine, we're going to have twos and fours in common. If we have eight and nine, we're going to have threes and fours in common. Yeah, so there are always two common digits between, between, green and purple and those two common digits that go that are shared by this arrow and this arrow by Sudoku end up in those two squares ah and hang on hang on hang on hang on and those two squares do not add up to five because if they did add up to five there would be a problem so surely I'm getting attacked by a fly um go away hang on yeah okay so I think green and purple don't add up to 15 is that true I'm now wondering whether I've just gone crazy. If green and purple. Uh, I'm getting, I'm now, now, now I'm confusing myself actually. Now I'm confusing myself. They are the common digits that can surround. They are the common digits that can surround each of these options. So they don't form dominoes that sum to 10 with those options. No, I might have got this wrong. I might have got this wrong. I was thinking, I think I was confusing myself because I was thinking that the complement to this digit, ah, go away, has to go in one of those two cells. Oh, hang on, 
hang on, hang on, hang on. And the complement to this one that adds up to 10 with it. Oh, it does work, it does work, but not for the reason I thought of at all. That's really peculiar. Okay, try this. So, hang on, <laughs> hang on a minute. So, green, green has a counterpart digit that with green sums to 10. And we know that that counterpart digit is in those two cells. Purple has a counterpart digit that sums to 10 with it. And we know that's in those two cells. Now, if, if the green's counterpart and purple's counterpart summed to five, i.e. if green and purple themselves summed to 15, because obviously green, green and its counterpart that add to 10 and purple and its counterpart that add to 10, if you sum all those four digits together, you get 20. So if we're saying that this digit plus this digit sum to five, then we know because the digits one, two, three, and four sum to 10, that these would sum to five and that wouldn't work. And that is an awful lot more complicated as a deduction than the way I, was, <laughs> I thought I'd understood this before, which was, I think, complete and utter bobbins. So we have arrived at a conclusion for a strange reason. But that's almost so complicated that I don't think that can be. Unless there is a way of seeing that more clearly. I'm suspicious that that's not what we're meant to do because that's so ludicrous. You have to sort of think about the complement digit, where that goes and what that would imply for this domino. So, and does it even matter? Does it matter that we now know that um, purple and green don't sum to 15? So they are not six, nine, they are not seven, eight. Mm, not sure. I would, I mean, it would be very, very nice to know if you could get one of these digits identified, but I don't think we are even close to that at this point. So, it's a really annoying fly. Um, so, what on earth do we do now? What I really want to know, I think, is where these complement digits go. Orange, orange's complement digit is sort of, it's in an offset X-wing position in this box. Purple's complement digit, which is down here, goes in one of these three positions. Is there some sort of restriction on that? don't think so actually oh god I'm getting, I'm getting attacked by a fly oh um purple's complement digit down here therefore in one of these three cells if it was here it would go in one of those two cells by sudoku and purple's complement would be on a sum adding to orange This is very, very hard to understand. Um, well, maybe I'm, I'm supposed to work out what these two digits are. So two of these digits are in common with two of those digits. So, so 
So I've got to select two of these and they will have a home in two of these. Ah, did you see that? I don't know if that came up on the camera, but basically there was a very annoying fly again. It's like Maverick. I can't get away from these things that fly. This is a smaller one, but it's actually more annoying than the real Maverick. Um, uh, okay. So two of these go into these. So if this repeats in this three, it has to, it, if that repeats, it has to go there. And then it would go in one of those. What's wrong with that? Oh, that, well, I tell you something, that doesn't, that's actually impossible. That's weird. That is weird as. That does not work. And it's actually quite straightforward to see why once you actually study it. If you, if you try and make those digits the same, let's just make them three. Where do I put seven in this box? And the answer is I can put seven in some places, but they're all in that row. And now where do I put seven in that box? And that's a bigger problem because it can't go anywhere. That's weird. That is weird. So if, I think that's just right though, isn't it? Whatever you put in there cannot possibly go in there. Yeah, it's just right. Two fours, where do you put six in this box? Don't know, but it's in one of those three cells. Once it's in one of those three cells, it can't be in those three cells and it can't go anywhere now in this box because it would be next to a four if you try and put it in. So that means, that means these are different. And if, all right, and if these are different, but two of these have to be on mirrored over here and these are the different digits then these digits are the same as those digits are the same as those digits so these digits are right we're uncoloring these we are uncoloring they lo oh no nah. no i didn't mean to do that i want to uncolor them and give them a new color and they are going to be awarded the color of ah oh, i don't know i've got to choose a color that's going to be reasonable I'm going to choose, I don't like using red next to orange. I'm going to use, oh goodness me, could I use yellow? I'm not very keen on using yellow next to orange either. But these digits are, are the same. And these digits are different, so I need to, to, to colour these different. That that one can be not blue then, that can be red. Okay, because that's not near an orange in this box. So these... Right, hang on, let me think about this. So now... No, okay, I, I think we've got to go more, we've got to be more precise. Because I, I now know that there is a low digit associated with green. Oh, hang on, is that the same as that digit then? I'm losing track of this. This this is where Fistum of Elders is sort of laughing at me in a voice. <laughs> I have an imagination of Fistum of Elders laugh. And it's sort of like a dastardly villain's laugh. Um, green's low digit, we know is in one of those two cells in this box, i.e. the digit that goes with green to add up to 10. It's in one of those two cells. Now, in this box, therefore, if we think about the low digits, 
these are not low green by Sudoku because one of these is low green. Yellow can't be low green because we know yellows are up here. So doesn't that mean that red is low green? So maybe I need to change red to green. And then we could say that this gets its own special mark to indicate. Oh, that's a horrible special mark. Maybe I'll make it grey. Oh, no. Hang on. It's all gone wrong. Ah, what's going on? I want to make this a colour to associate with this, which is green. But I want to... Obviously, these are not the same number. They are just digits that combine together to add up to 10. So I need to make this... Maybe I'll make that red. Give it a red flash. So a red flash on a digit means that it accompanies the high value of that colour and adds to 10 with it. So now I know that there is a purple digit. So does that mean that that's a purple digit? Because the purple, the complement of purple that goes with purple to add up to 10 is in this domino. And therefore, in this box, it's not down here. We know it's not yellow by Sudoku, because the digit down here is not yellow. So it is blue. So that is purple and gets the red flash. So now... means that what does this mean so so gr green red flash digit in this box where is it and I think it's got to be in one of those two cells hasn't it because it's not yellow, so it's not down here. And it can't be in the same row as itself. So it goes in one of those two cells. I'm changing my mind again about how I pencil mark this because I want to indicate that this is in two cells. But to do that, I'm going to have to do that, which is ludicrous. So I'm going to change. I'm going to change again. I'm going to red flash the high digit and anti-flash the low digit and now I can say one of those two is green and I'm going to do that the same thing over there so I red flash the high digit and that goes with a low digit which is just the plain color okay so this digit needs to be red flashed because we know that that digit is not the same as purple it's not the same as green so that gets a red flash <laughs> i wanted to avoid reds and oranges together but i've messed that up um now this digit well hang on Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Yeah, so green, green is in one of those two cells in this box, not next to the red flashed complement of it. Purple is not yellow, so purple is in one of those two cells in box five. Don't I need a purple on this arrow? I do. I need a low digit on it, and it can't be any of those digits, so that's got to be purple. But now I'm wondering what goes with this digit, which is the orange high digit. And we know that it's... So, so because we know that this, this purple and this green are different from this orange, these three numbers are all different. The complement of this is not the purple digit and it's not the green digit. So the complement of this is a yellow digit and it's therefore not that one. 
So now, for our next trick, we are going to make this cell. That has to be the complement of this. So that is just plain orange. And this cell is now its own. It's, it's the fourth color, if you like. It's, it's the fourth low digit. It's not purple. It's not green. And it's not the orange. So it is, it is the real yellow. So one of these is orange now. And it's the complement of this digit. One of these is orange now. Ah. Ah, uh, no. Ooh. Right. This is useful. Where does that digit go in box five? This is, a, this is ridiculous. I mean, imagine setting this. Imagine, imagine if you said, oh, I'm gonna come up with a new set of rules. I know what I'll do. I'll do an arrow Sudoku with a weird negative constraint about fives and tens. Well, just imagine for your life then, if you come up with this. How would you do that? This is nuts. It's just bonkers. This cell, where does it go in this box? Well, we know it's not the same as this digit. So it's in one of those three cells, but it can't, it can't, we can't put purple on this arrow. We can't put the high purple with the low purple that we know is in one of those two squares because it will make a domino that adds up to 10. So neither of those is purple and that is purple. And therefore it's the high purple digit. And that means that's not low purple because that would create a domino that adds to 10, which means that is low purple and it's one, two, three or four, which means that Yeah, we just do this again with green. Where's green in box five? Where is green in box five? It's not in those three cells by Sudoku. We know it's different from orange. It can't go in those two squares because they're low. It can't go in either of these two squares because it will pair up with its natural complement and create a domino that adds to 10. So it must go there. And therefore that is a six, seven, eight or nine, and, whoopsie. And that means it can't be next to this digit, which would create a domino here that adds to 10. So that means this digit is its complement. That is a one, two, three, or four. And now, now, now that digit is yellow high. Because if this digit can't be yellow high, because if that's yellow high, it creates a domino that adds to 10. There must be a high digit that adds to yellow with this digit. That's the only one we haven't got. It's got to be now that one. That gets a red flash. That's a six, seven, eight, or nine. And that digit is a five. <laughs> that's a digit. We've got a digit. It's only taking me an hour all but. Um, that's about standard for Fistum of Bell. Um, so this is a five. And now we can say that. don't know what we can say as a result of that can we can we keep this coloring going somehow so purple high is in one of those three cells but that's not affected by the position of this digit so i think that's got completely free reign i want to say i might be wrong but i think that's true green high is here so green high is in one of those three cells oh but can't, ah, can't be there look because it would be next to green low so green high is in one of those two but this is getting awfully difficult again this is the problem i was having before uh, in in gray flashing the fact that green high was in one of these two i'll overlap with the gray flashing i've got in my purple and that will not be good So am I broken now? Have I sort of got this as far as it can go? What does this row need? This row has got its purple high and low. It's got its green high and low. So it needs, it needs the high digits associated with yellow and orange, which go into those squares. Oh, goodness me, right, that's complicated because that means that 
you know, imagine if this was yellow high, that would determine this digit as not being able to be yellow low because that would create a naughty domino. So there's a sort of X-wing effect. If this is yellow high, that's yellow low, and these are both orange high and low. So ah, five is in one of those three cells by Sudoku. So five is in one of these two cells by Sudoku. Ah, now can I use this? No, I don't believe it. Right, this digit is a high digit. We know, Remember from what we did before, it goes in one of those two squares. I don't think we can determine that. I can almost not see these arrows either. This green is not showing up very well against the, the arrow isn't showing up very well. But that is on an arrow. Oh. Right, that can't be a nine. This cell here can't be a nine. It's on an arrow that's summing up with green to equal that. That's not nine. So yellow, hang on, yellow red, which is a high digit, where does yellow red live? Yellow red. Oh. Yellow red is one of these two digits. Oh, goodness me, this is so difficult to understand. Yellow red, which is one of those. And therefore is down there somewhere, I think. Can't be nine. So, right, so hang on. That means that yellow low can't be one. So there is a little bit of restriction between those two. Right, the same token, that can't be six, I suppose, because this is at least adding up to seven. So purple red, which is that digit, is not six. And therefore purple low, which is this digit, is not four. And that's not four. Which means, ah, ah, that digit, which is red-orange, is not able to be 9 anymore because it can only add 3 and 5 together as a maximum. So red-orange is not 9. So where does red-orange live in the puzzle? Or at least orange. Orange lives there, so that's not 1 because this can't be 9. Ah, that's lovely. That is lovely. Right, this domino now. Let's look at this. Remember this domino can't add to 5. Well, now if it's not got a 4 in it, it would add to 5. It would be a 2-3 pair. So there's a 4 in this domino. So that's not a 4. And that's 4 is a green 4. So high green is not now 6. <laughs> this is completely monstrous. Um, so what on earth does that mean? I don't know. It means that it means that this is where I haven't got a clue what it means. <laughs> I haven't got a clue what it means. It means that... Hang on. This domino has a four in it. These cells... Oh, right. One of those two cells is a one, therefore. So that means if one of those two cells is a one, the nine is either purple or green. One of those two is a nine. Oh, which we suppose we could have seen from the box. Where do those two map to? So that one, if it's a nine, that's a nine. And nine would live in one of those cells. And that would be a one. That would be a six, because that these two add up to this one. So hang on, hang on, hang on. So actually, we know there is a relationship between purple, which is this one. This 
this these two digits have an intimate relationship with orange digits high and low in the sense that whatever they're mutually dependent because whatever purple is forces the value of high orange which therefore forces the value of low orange so if this is one that's nine and that's six nine and six right that's interesting five two makes seven here and two goes eight here so the right so these digits add up to 15 which means I want to say these digits add up to five which is fine obviously Oh, this is so clever. Oh, my goodness me. Right, right, got it. So, so Holiday Brain is scraping away now, and I understand what's going on. I can say something about this domino. Right, I think, because, because there's a relationship via this arrow between the orange digits and the purple digits, we know that whatever this is, whether it's one, two or three, it fixes the value of orange and it simultaneously fixes the value of high purple. If this is one, high purple is nine. If this is two, this is eight. If this is three, this is seven. But the simultaneous effect on this being six, seven and eight means these two cells add up to 15. But we know that the purple, the, the purple low and purple high and the orange low and the orange high all four of those digits must sum up to 20 because that's sort of how we've defined them. So if the high digits sum up to 15, the low digits sum up to five, and if the low digits sum up to five, what can they not do? They cannot be next to each other orthogonally. And if they can't be next to each other orthogonally, so these two squares, these two colors basically, can't be next to each other orthogonally. That is orange and purple. So how could that be low, low, low orange? It would create a naughty domino. So that is low yellow. And if that's yo low yellow, that is that is orange. And if that is orange, it cannot be next to orange high, which is what this I'm hoping represents. Although its grey flash is not has not been given a red flash. So how? Why are these two squares orange? You, yeah, they seem to have to be. One of those two seems to have to be high orange that's high orange so there is a high orange up in one of those squares and now we can say it's not here so that is high orange which means it is not five which means five is there which means that this square is now what's high orange six seven or eight and that means I don't know what that means. That means that Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sure this must mean something very much more profound than I'm able to articulate or spot, but that feels I mean it feels incredibly I don't see how to do that. I don't see how this is pinpointing anymore. This is five do something somehow. Part no, it's so we can't. Right, maybe that's what we've got to do. We've got to remember we can't put oranges and purples together because orange. Ah, ah, is that it? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, let's look at this digit. How could that be purple low now? When we now know purple and purple, these two digits sum to five. It can't be because those those two would sum to five. So that is not purple low, which means that is purple low, which means that is not five. It means purple low is that one, which is one, two, or three. This domino now must have a one in it. Ah, oh, this is oh, 
come on, this must be true. Right, if this was no, didn't have a 1 in it, this would be a 2-3 pair and would be a domino adding to 5. So there mu as there is a 1 in this domino, those two squares can't be 1. Which... No, okay, so we don't know. I suddenly thought maybe that was making this a 1-4 pair, but it's not, is it? Because green could be 1. And if green is 1... Oh, of course. Right, yeah. So we've, we've worked out those two squares add up to 5. But we know that the digits 1, 2, 3 and 4, if we sum them all together, we get 10. So if we know these two add up to 5... We know those two add up to 5. And if these two add up to 5, what can that not be? It can't be yellow, because that would be a green-yellow pair, and green and yellow add up to 5. So that's orange. Which means that's yellow. Which means that can't be high yellow. So does that have to be high orange? Yes, high orange is in one of those two squares. High yellow, let's just check high yellow there. One of these by the looks of things, and there. Yeah, so this is not high yellow, this is high orange. High orange is the six, seven or eight number. So this digit is now high yellow. So that loses its orangeification. High yellow is a 6, 7 or an 8. Surely this has done it now, hasn't it? So now... Hi. <laughs> um, hmm. How is this working? These two digits sum up to 10. Not 10, what am I talking about? They add up to 5. Well, that's okay. There are lots of things. I, well, not lots of things. There's one very simple thing I can see there. Which I, th I want to say is true, but I'm just sort of... I'm looking at it... I'm, I'm looking at it to sort of check it, because it doesn't feel... It doesn't feel feel like a very natural deduction, but let me just think about this. If it's true that these two squares are up to 5, and I think it is, then how can this be a 3? I don't think it can be, because this digit would then have to be a 6, at the same time that this digit has to be a 2, because we know these add up to 5. But at the same time, we've defined yellow and high yellow to add up to 10. And those squares definitely don't add up to 10. So I think that's total nonsense. And if that's total nonsense, that square is not a 3. And if that square is not a 3, that's the green digits. And this square is not a 7. So, so red green is now eight or nine. Red green is now eight or nine. Green itself is not three. If this is two, this can't be three. What is going on here? And the, oh, I know. Hang on. If I know if I know one of these is a one, don't I? I? I know. I know those two. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I know those two digits sum up to five. So now this this cannot be a two because if this is a two, I can't make those two add up to five. So this is now three or four, which means that its counterpart here can't be an eight anymore which is the red-yellow digit. Red-yellow is that digit, which now can't be at 8 anymore. 
yellow itself oh yellow itself look is really tumbling down its options in this cell and this cell Ah, oh, I thought I thought for a moment I could have proved this wasn't a nine, but I still can can get to nine with seven and two on that arrow very annoyingly. Um hmm. okay. So what on earth do we do next? Do we have a way of limiting things? further I'm desperately trying to see something and failing and the fan turns on as if to mock me um, it doesn't oh hang on two, orange is two three or four so I can take one out of that cell there's probably all sorts of things like that I could do if I really focused on the Sudoku here So now, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Red green, which is a massive digit, it's an eight or a nine, is in one of those two cells. Oh, it could still go here. Bother. It could go here if it's an eight only, and that would have to be a one. This would be eight one, that would be nine. That would be 9. That's the only place this digit could then go in the box. So 9, 9. Oh, that would that would work, look. Because 9 would go... 9 is a... Per, if 9 was purple, purple's digit would be a 1. Because 9 plus 1 is 10. And that does seem to work with that being an 8. But if... Okay... If this, if if on the other hand, green red was nine, it would have to go there, wouldn't it? Because it can't go on a two cell arrow then. So this would be a nine. This would not be a nine, so that would not be a one. So this would be a. Oh, you see, mm, this is an area where somebody, I'm sure Mark, for example, would would just force this now. You could force this, I'm sure you could, because it, it all chains so dramatically. But I don't like doing that. I really don't. So I think we've got to come up with 1 hour 12. How have I had 1 hour 12? That has flown by. I think we've got to come up with something cleverer. But unfortunately, I don't know what that is. Is there something clever we can say about... I'm, try, I'm trying to use this arrow desperately. Um, if this is six, this is one, that's then got to be seven and that's got to be two. And that works nicely because that would be nine and that would be what it's meant to be. And that would be eight. So six one here. I can't see what's wrong with that. Seven two makes this eight. Oh, that doesn't work. Right. Okay. Here's something fairly straightforward. If this is, if this is seven, you can see that that forces this to be two, I and mean, the complement of the purple is this digit, which has to be eight now. But this has to be a 6, and this has to be a 1, and 6 plus 1 do not equal 8. So that breaks the world, and if it breaks the world, it cannot be true. So this digit is not able to be 7. Now that is orange-red. Orange-red is the same as orange, so that can't be 3. And if that can't be 3, remember these two digits sum up to 5, so if that can't be three, hang on, let, let's do this slowly. Let's do this slowly. That can't be seven. Uh, that can't be seven. Orange can't be three. Orange can't be three. Now, let's come back to this now. Because this can't be three, this can't be two. 
um, which is the same as this not being two and this not being two and it's the same as this now not able to be eight because that's eight and two are a pair that add up to ten so that's not an eight Um, can I see anything good about that? I could see I could see something weird, which is that can't be an eight anymore. Because if that was an eight, where would it go in this box? And the answer is nowhere. It couldn't go anywhere. It can't go on its own arrow, so it'd have to go in one of those two squares. We've already we've known that forever, and neither of those can be an eight anymore. Right, so that's not a three. This is massive if this is true. How can that be a three? If that's a three, what on earth do you put in that cell? You can't put five because this can't be eight. And you can't put the high, the high digit that's eight or nine because that's going to break this arrow. So there's no possible fill. So this, this is beautiful, that's a one. So purple is one, which is that digit, which is that digit, which means that purple's high is nine, which means that's nine. There's a nine, oh, this is lovely. So that means that one's eight, that's eight, that's six, ah, that's six. That's therefore six. I must have a um, thingy thing turned on. You know, the thing that, that highlights clashes. I don't like that, but I'm on, uh, because I'm on my laptop, I've got no idea what the settings are. Um, now, if that's become six, six is complement is four, so that must be four. That must be three, which means that must be seven. That's the complement. That does work with a two. So this is lovely. This is working. This is actually filled in a way that looks consistent with our colouring. So that's four and three. Green is a two. Four plus three plus two does equal nine. Don't put a six next to an eight. So that should be a six, which is a yes. That's the same as that. That's a seven. That's a three by the magic of colouring or Sudoku. You take your choice. That's a four. Oh, this could, no, 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 right. Okay, that can't be six anymore. So that can't be five. So the five goes there, and this square has to be the eight or the nine, which is an eight. So that is an eight, and is the red-green digit. Uh, and now that adds up to nine, you've guessed it, which is good. So that becomes a red-purple digit. And these digits now just have to be sorted out. So what we can, what can we say about these? We can see, by, let's do them by Sudoku and then colour them in. These are 2, 7 and 9. Now what can we not, well we can't make that 7, it's beneath a 3. We can't make that 2, it's beneath an 8. And that one seems to have free reign. Uh, oh look, lovely. The 3 and the 2 would add up to a naughty number. So that's got to be 9, that's got to be 7, that's got to be 2. That is ridiculous. Oh look at that, it highlighted all those naughty digits again. So... Now we know that green on its own is the two. We know seven is what? Red, yellow. And we know nine is red, purple. <laughs> there we go. Done it. Uh, well, not really. I've done a third of it, maybe slightly over. Um, I mean, <laughs> Mr. Mappel must have just been cackling to himself when he came up with this. I'd love to know if that was the way you're meant to do it. It, it. I mean, that is brutally difficult. It's amazingly elegant, though, isn't it? When you finally twig, it's about how to keep the dominoes that add up to five apart. And you can work out that sort of there are remote pairs that you've got to... So that forces this and it forces that. It's just beautiful. Sick and beautiful. So now I'm thinking... It's either going to be about this row or this row or possibly these arrows. And the reason I say obviously whole rows is that all of these squares are influenced by the fact that, well, particularly against the low numbers, they have restrictions just two ways because they can't, they can neither add up to five nor ten. So I'm thinking one of these at circles is going to be the key. And we shall start with, I think, this one. So, what can we not have here? 
we cannot have 3 because that would mean this square to be a 1 or a 2 and it could be neither. It can't be 4. Can it be 5? If it's 5... No! <laughs> that is one of the most inane and inept questions I've ever asked in a video. Okay, fairly obviously this cannot be a 5 because this domino would add up to 5 and that would break the rules of the puzzle. Sorry. It can't be 6 because 6 and 4 would add up to 10. So this is actually a mighty digit. It's a 7 or an 8, I think, just by, you know, simple deductions. Now, is anything restricted there? If that's 7, this is... Um, not restricted at all, I want to say. Well, if it's 1, 6, it would have to be like this. Can't, oh, it can't actually be 2, 5. There is a small point, because the 2 would have to go there and be beneath an 8, so that doesn't work. Ah, OK, that's interesting as well. It can't be 3, 4 either, because if it was 3, 4... The 4 would be here, and the 3 would be here, and the 7 and the 3 would make a domino. So, so this if this is 7, it only works as 7, 1, 6. So what's wrong with that? If that's 7, 1, 6, this is where I'm going to fail to spot some silly negative constraint. I don't know what's wrong with that. Let's see if we can disprove 8, because that would be lovely. Um, if 8 is impossible, so 8, 8, right, 8, 2, 6 isn't going to work, because the 2 would go here and create an 8, 2 domino. 8, 1, 7, what's wrong with that? That would put a 1 here and a 7 here. 8, 1, 7. I'm sure that doesn't work for some reason. Um, he says dismissively, not being able to spot why. 8 and 1 don't add up to a naughty number. 1 and 7 don't add up to a naughty number. I don't know why that doesn't work. Now maybe that works. All right, 8, 1, 7. Um, now the other option is going to be 8, 3, 5, which oh, is very, very annoying because that seems to have total, totally free reign, doesn't it? Okay, sorry, this is not this was not the place to look. This doesn't work. I can't see a reason why anything could be ruled out from any of those squares. Alright, let's try this one. Um if this is it can't be three, it can't be four because that would need a one three pair. It can't be five for this is the annoying reason that these would add up to five axiomatically, and also Sudoku, which I neglected to see first. What about six? 6 couldn't have 1, 5 on the arrow, so if that's 6, it's got to be with 2, 4, and it would have to not have the 4 here, because that would make a naughty domino. So it'd have to be like that. If this, it can't be 7, it can't, ah, and it can't be 9, so it'd have to be 8 if it's not 6. Now if it's 8, it can't be 3, 5, or 1, 7, so it'd have to be 2, 6. And if this is 8, the 2 couldn't be... Oh, the 2 couldn't be there. So the 6 would be there and the 2 would be there. And there is definitely a 2 on this domino then. But it doesn't it doesn't resolve. So if this is if this is 8, this is 7. If this is 8, this is 7. This was a 1 6 pair, wasn't it? Can work. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I think, I think I'm think i on the wrong track totally now. Let's check this digit. Not hopeful though. It's not going to be restricted, I don't think. 1, 2, it could be 3. Can't be 4 because that would create naughty domino. It can be 5, I think. Can it be 6? Does one of those have to be a 6? Either that's a 6 or there's a 6 on the arrow. So no, it can't be 6. Oh, for goodness sake, there's a 6 above it. Why don't you do it simply? <laughs> Why? 7 can't be 8 or 9. Okay, so that is actually only 3, 5 or 7. Which is, almost feels like it's doing something to this, doesn't it? That digit. Okay, let's try. Maybe it's this arrow. So that digit can't be a 1, because it would add up to 9. Can it be a 2? Yes. Can it be a 3? No. Can it be a 4? Yes. Can it be a 5? Probably. 
Um, yeah, all right. Six. No, seven or eight. Oh, I don't believe it. Okay, this is a very underwhelming cell. This cell can't be one, could be two, can't be three. That would make a naughty domino. Can't be, f could be four, could be five, could be six, can't be seven, eight, or nine. So two, four, five, six. Is there no way we can do better than that? This digit can't be, uh, can be one can't be two can't be three because three would go with the two can't be four or five so it's got to be high after that could be six or seven can't be eight or nine eight would create a naughty domino ah right that digit's important because that's a one six or a seven and that rules out seven from here because remember seven from here had to be with a one six domino and that would give this cell no fill this is so hard <laughs> so that's eight if this is an 8, it doesn't even tell us anything. Ah, no, it tells us that digit is a 6, and that couldn't go with a 4, so that's got to be 2, that's got to be 4. That's not able to be 6 anymore. I can't remember what that's ruling out. If this is 8... Oh, no, that was that was the option if this was 7. So if this is 8, it's either 1, 7. Ah, nah, no, this digit's, this digit's now coming in again, isn't it? Because if this is 8 and this, this is 1, 7, that's got no fill. So this is 3, 5. And if that's 3, 5, that's a 7. Good grief, and that's a 1. And now these, two, I'm going to do these digits again now, because we might as well, we've got really limited them. These are 2s and 4s. Somehow that's not resolved. What about the 3, 5 here, is that resolved? don't know but may okay maybe this arrow now does some work that digit I can see it can be a three but it can't be a one two or a four could it be a five or a six or it can't be a seven okay so this is three five or six So is it something to do with this? I don't think this cell's under pressure. Maybe it is for some reason I can't understand. I can't I can't make this cell nine, because I can't, oh no, I can. Five and four would add up to nine. Oh, I can make this cell nine. Oh, bother. Right, nine, eight, eight would have to be two, six. That doesn't work. Okay, eight's impossible. For a weird reason if that's eight that has to be six because that has to be two because we can't double four the arrow but now that's a four and that domino adds up to ten which doesn't work so this is not eight what about seven here no seven oh maybe actually oh, i was about to get excited so if this is seven Five two might work, and that would put a four here, which would I think be okay. But three four doesn't work because this would be a two and create a five domino. So I think that could be seven. Uh, it's adding up to a minimum of five, isn't it? So this then has to be six as its next option, and that does ah six doesn't work because these two can't add up to six. So in fact, this is seven or nine. Right, let's check. What are the ways that this can work then? So this, if this is nine, this has to be five, four. So let's focus on this digit. That would have to be five. If this is seven, it can't be one, six. It could be two, five. This would be five again though. And it can't be three, four, because this would be the four, that would be the three, and that would be a two above it. So that cell is always a five, even though we don't know what goes in the corner. Good grief. And of course, this isn't going to do anything. Is Oh, no, no, it's not. It's not. Oh, my goodness me. And now I've used all the clues. That is te absolutely terrifying. 
Oh no, right, okay, where does one go in this box? It can't go next to the four, can it? So it's got to go next to the two. So maybe Sudoku will save us three, five, and nine. Nine has to be in one of these. And three, three, ah, three can't go next to two, of course, or seven, in fact. So th right, so the nine has to go here. And this, at the bottom, is a three, five pair. And if that's a three, five pair, is that somehow resolved? <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. Nine is in one of those two squares in box seven. One is in one of these two squares in box... Uh, oh, this, there's a one, two pair. There's a one, two pair in box nine by Sudoku. So now you can't put eight here. You can't put eight here. So eight is in one of those two cells. I think either of those is possible. So eight is in one of these. Oh, no, where does eight go in this box, therefore? It can't go in the corner. So it's got to go here by Sudoku. Which I, I mean, might be. And maybe the bottom row then now where we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we need six, seven, and nine. So this square is six or seven, either of which seem possible. This square is six or nine. Can I do better than that somehow? <laughs> I don't know. Genuinely haven't got a clue. Three, oh, this is it. Right, where does three go in this box? It's got to go here now. And if three goes there, what can you not put beneath it? Seven, that would create an naughty domino. So that's nine, that's six, that's seven. Uh, this square here has to be something, seven. Um, now to make this work, that's a four and that's a two, just by maths. So, okay, so now I'm starting to believe we might finish this because at least I now know what box one, you know, these triples are. There's presumably going to be some sort of restriction on them. And these digits now as well. I know a four, six, and nine. Ah, look, four, six, and eight. But four and six have to be chaperoned. Can't put the four, six in a domino. They'd add up to ten. So the eight must sit in the middle of them. And the four here tells us the order. Good grief. Four, six. Don't put one next to four. So two, one. Quite know how these threes and fives get resolved. All right, let's have a look up here. We need one sevens and eights. He says desperately trying to work out whether we can use negative constraint. That can't be a seven. One and seven and eight don't add up to anything interesting. Right, let's try this side. Uh, three, no, six, seven, and eight. That's no use at all. That is absolutely no use at all. All right, these then. Three, four, and nine. Well. I can't, oh yes, of course, four and nine can't go next to one. So that's three, and we get a four, nine pair. And these squares are one, two, and five. And that that also seems to be remarkably useless. So I suppose the two can't go next to the three. So the seven can't go next to the three. But that's actually really worrying because that I thought this box was going to have to do magic and it's not done anything. What about those squares then? One, eight, nine. Right, one and nine have to be kept apart. So there's an eight in the middle of the grid with a one, nine pair flanking it. Eight comes out of this cell by Sudoku. Um. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what is it? What is it, you naughty puzzle? It's going to be. How long have I had now? One hour 33. Oh my god. Goodness is one of the longest souls ever. Two, three, five. All right, two, three, five, and nine here. Is it two and three have to be kept apart? But beyond that, I don't think there's much of a restriction. All right, what about these then? Um, three, four, five, and six. Ah, that's important because if you think about it, in this column, four and six have to be at the top and have to be kept apart. So that is a four, six pair, which means that's a three or a five. And that means, I haven't got a clue. That's not eight by Sudoku. <laughs> I 
I don't believe it. I'm really running out of ideas here. Uh, three, right, three, five, six, seven. Okay, three, five, six, seven. What is restricted here? That can't be three. That's not enough. That's really, really, really not enough. Okay, let's try these. Two, three, four, and five. Two, three, four, five. The two can't go here by because of the eight. The three can't go here because of the three. So that becomes four or five. Two has to be in one of those cells. Okay, if two has to be in one of these cells, three can't be in one of those cells because it would clash with the two. Well, we create a domino that adds to five with the two. So these fail to have three in them. Which creates a th which forces the three to be down at the bottom. Look, so that's three, that's five. Five comes out of all these squares as a result of that. It gives us a three, six, seven triple. Two can't go next to eight. Good grief. So the two goes up here. Two is not here anymore. So the two goes here by Sudoku. So the two is not in those cells. I mean, either that's, that's a two. It's the only place two can go in column seven. And uh, doesn't resolve this. Does it do anything there? No. Nine is in one of these. So we can't put one next to that, but we don't want to. Um, wow. It's, I mean, wow. <laughs> um, right. Right. Okay. Uh, what do we do now? I could use the fact that I don't know oh I see yeah here I don't know how long this has been available for but obviously I've got to keep the 3 and the 7 apart so that means I've got to have a 6 here which means that's 7 and that's 3 which means that's not 3 and that 6 gives me a 7 over here whoops so that might do that gives me a one over here which gives me an eight here which gives me a seven here now does that do it yes that does stuff six and eight go into the grid four goes into the grid here so that's a five that's a one and that's a nine ah and that's a one and that's a four by sudoku so that's a four that's a nine and don't put one next to oh we can just do that by sudoku never one to do things the easy way that's a six and all of a sudden i think it is crack oh no i've got a deadly pattern ah surely what's oh the two can't be next to a three good grief five five three three it's done so somehow it's 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 thinking I wanted to know that. So it's 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 um, somehow the settings on this have gone totally awry compared to normal. I normally don't have clashes on, and I normally don't have it telling me at the end whether or not it's correct. So I like to click the tick button, and I know many of you will be hoping for me to colour in the rest of this grid in this ludicrous um, ludicrous way. So let us actually do that before my laptop totally gives up the ghost um, to give ourselves the satisfaction of a completely chromatically consistent Sudoku um, and solution thereof. Sevens are yellow and red. <laughs> Sixes are orange and red. Eights are red and green. Nines are purple and red and fives are nothing at all and that is one heck of a puzzle that is very hard i didn't bifurcate i really don't think i did but i had to well i had to get rid of holiday brain which unfortunately slowed me down for a while but my goodness me that was i mean it's so it's it's just it's clever on another plane and that's what Mr. Maffel does. He does things that are clever on a totally different level. It makes you feel stupid for a hundred minutes, um, but he does it in one of the most sort of 
genteel and educational ways you can possibly imagine so thanks to Fistenfeld thanks so much for watching please let me know if you understand why it's called Sajita I would like to know and thanks yeah for your company and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic <laughs>